so for, so far we have discussed uh, about the about the phi electron theory then band theory right and using band theory uh, we have we have uh, studied the semiconductor so basically what we have done in case of metal So, using band theory, this one can explain semiconductor, right? And using phi theory, phi electron theory, one can explain metal, right? So, uh, actually, so far what uh, we try to find out that is the density of states, density of states. which is nothing but the uh, density of orbitals, where each orbital contain uh, one electrons or carrier. So, that is why that is also equivalent to density of, of electrons or holes electrons or holes right. So, actually, actually in the system there are many electrons there are many states also. So, here whatever density of states or density of electrons or holes whatever we uh, uh, try to find out that is not all electron that is basically the electrons or holes which which participate in transport which uh, act as a carrier of, 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 of something either carrier of electricity or carrier of thermal energy etcetera. So, that is why it is better to tell that uh, density of carrier density of carrier. So, carrier can be either electron or holes because they participate in conduction either thermal conduction or or electric electrical conduction, but mainly we are interested for electrical conduction right. So, so electrical conductivity or conduction. So, basically today I will discuss about the uh, electrical conduction, electrical conduction in metal and semiconductor. So, metal, so there we consider that electrons are free, right. Electrons are free and uh, all electrons participate in, in conduction as per classical theory, but as per quantum theory, all electron does not participate, only electrons which are close to the Fermi level, which are close to the Fermi level they participate in conduction. So, what is the density of, of states or density of carriers uh, at the Fermi level that is that is what or near the Fermi level that is what uh, we are interested and we, we found also right. Similarly, in semiconductor, so this uh, uh, carrier in conduction band they are like similar to free electron ok. And holes in a valence band 
they are equivalent they are also also this as if this free carrier okay because this conduct electronic conduction band and holes in valence band so both are near the fermi level because fermi level in between this conduction band and uh, uh, valence band so these carriers will participate in in conduction in transport okay so what is the density of this of these of those carriers that also we have uh, found for n type p type semiconductor it may happen these both are there in case of intrinsic semiconductor so in that case these both carrier and holes they will participate in conduction right so conduction so we use the parameter conductivity conductivity to express the degree of uh, degree, degree of uh, what I should tell degree of conduction of carriers in the in the metal or in the semiconductor. So, and this just opposite is resistivity resistivity. So, already earlier I have defined this this conductivity and resistivity, but uh, just that I did after the this free electron theory, but now as a whole I want to discuss this electrical conduction in metal and semiconductor. So, for this conduction JLE we write sigma and the resistivity we write is rho. Right. So, this uh, <coughs> So, electrons in a in a in a metal or in a semiconductor they are all the time they are moving uh, randomly. So, their resultant velocity net velocity along a particular direction is 0. So, to get the conduction of electron in a in a in a sample in a metal or semiconductor we need to apply force. So, basically we, we apply electrical force. So, electric field we apply electric field we apply. So, electric field we apply on a on a sample it may be metal or semiconductor, but let us let us consider metal first and then we will extend it to the semiconductor. So, in case of metal in case of metal. So, what uh, uh, if I apply electric field E right. So, metal only electrons are there. So, this force will be act on this, this minus charge minus E E. So, that is the force that is the force will act on this on this on the carrier right on the electrons. Now, due to this force what will happen? So, so this force is applied on a on a particle. Now, this particle will move its velocity will increase there will be acceleration right. So, that is the classical concept of motion of a particle under a force. So, in this case uh, if we so this force can be written as d p by d t change of momentum change of momentum in case of met free electron we can write p equal to basically uh, h cross k h cross k right. So, d p by d t equal to I can write h cross t k by d t equal to minus E this electrical energy electrical field. Okay. So, if, uh, so this one can take as a equation motion equation of motion of an 
electron in a metal this minus E by H cross. Now, what happens if if this electric field is applied if electric field is applied then because of this force this electron will be in motion electron will be in motion and this d k by d t is basically. So, p equal to m v p equal to m v. So, this v this velocity is basically equivalent to h cross k by m right. right. So, so basically d v by d t equal to h cross m d k by d t right. So, change this basically d k by d t it is telling this it is basically acceleration it is equivalent to acceleration right d v by d t is acceleration anyway. So, if I look at this equation so, it is just like d x by d t equal to if I apply constant electric field constant electric field. So, it is like it is constant so it is like constant. So, what does it mean this it is moving with constant velocity it is moving this particle is moving with constant velocity or this particle is changing its position it is changing with position say some constant c as it is like this. Okay. It is so, with time it is changing its position uniformly. Okay. So, without any acceleration just uniform velocity. So, in k space if I if I see this in k space. So, as if this this is the velocity in k space this is the velocity and carrier is moving with uniform velocity. So, it is uh, it is uh, uh, it is in k space it is in k space. So, if, if it is k x this is k y and this is k z. So, uh, one can one can draw a one can draw a sphere, one can draw a sphere. Now, uh, this from here, so I can tell that k equal to k equal to so if I integrate, so k at at time t minus k at time 0, k at time 0. Okay, equal to minus e epsilon t by h cos. So we will get this kind of things. Okay, if I at t equal to zero, just before applying electric field, so this as if this uh, this is the center of the sphere. This is k zero. Okay, at time t equal to zero. Now after time t so, it will change the it will it will change this uh, from k 0 to it will come at another position at k at t. So, as if this uh, this sphere is moving as if this sphere is this sphere is moving with time. So, here it was 0 now new center is here this is this is this k t k t position. So, this at time t this sphere moved from this position to this position. So, it is new center of the sphere. So, I can tell this change is say delta k. So, for this time delta k uh, time t it will move delta k equal to 
So, how much amount this x minus e epsilon p by h cos right. So, so due to electric field as if here this sphere in k space it is moving and this uh, so this movement is basically equivalent to the motion of the conduction of the electrons. So, because this electrons near the Fermi sphere or enclosing the Fermi sphere. So, they participate they response to the electric field they participate in conduction without changing the volume of this of this sphere because uh, because this uh, volume of the sphere as you remember there is uh, total volume of the sphere is uh, is the volume of the all states volume of the all all orbitals ok. So, due to electric field this volume of the uh, um, orbitals is cannot be changed only what can be changed that is the electrons carriers can go from one state to another state one orbitals to another orbitals or it can move in uh, from uh, in each in same orbital, but from one place to the another place ok. So, so now we think that this so for time t. So, the sphere is moved by this amount right. Now, for if I increase the time, so it will continue to move, it will continue to move right. It will continue to move because time is is 1 second after 1 second what will happen after 2 second after 3 second after 4 seconds. So, it will it will move and move and move ok. So, under uniform electric field, but this, but this uh, uh, this does not happen this does not happen this does not happen what uh, if we think this this way that just I have applied electric field for short time. So, time that time is t equal to tau ok for this time I have applied this uh, applied this electric field E ok. So, during this for this during this time so this it is moved from it is moved from this place to that, that place. Now, electric field is not there. So, its displacement will be delta k equal to this. So, T if I replace by delta. So, now for this electric field so it will just shifted these things shifted by this delta k. Now, what will happen? Electric field is not there. So, what will happen? So, it will go back to its original position, but why it will go back to original position ok. So, it will happen it will go back to its original position because because due to the collision due to the collision. So, collision with what or due to the friction it will it will go back. So, if so due to the friction due to the collision. So, I will discuss about the source of collision ok. So, due to the collision so uh, this if electric field is there in that case what will happen. So, this it is it is moving and electric uh, this uh, collision this friction because of that collision or friction. Uh, so, because of this so basically scattering uh, scattering of the conduction electron. So, it will try to take it other side. So, between these two force one is collision because of that it will get friction opposite to the motion. So, and another electric field will apply force in this direction. So, they will balance ok. Then steady state will arrive and in that steady state 
in that steady state. So, this sphere will move means conduction electron will move and because of that we will get current we will get current right. So, so, for, so what is current? Current is basically this we express in terms of density current density j means per unit volume uh, so per, per uh, uh, carrier or uh, passing through a per unit cross section per unit time ok so total amount of charge are passing through a unit cross section per unit time so that's the charge density so if i know the if i know the velocity so v velocity v and the charge density is any right n is the density of states density of carrier so I multiply with charge so minus charge so i will put minus here so minus j equal to minus minus any v that will be the uh, that will be the uh, this uh, charge density and this so here so v is important so this v is called generally drift velocity and this drift velocity will get from because of the applying electric field before applying electric field this net velocity is zero after applying electric field so this carrier will move in one direction ok uh, overcoming the friction collision right in steady state ok so we can get this v from here because here this collision uh, is considered so so this we can consider that when at t equal to 0 we applied electric field and then this sphere is moving and if collision time this t whatever i have considered so this t is uh, if we tell this the relaxation time or collision time collision time collision time or relaxation time relaxation time so what is that what does it mean so it means the uh, time this is the time between two successive collision ok so so when it is moving after this time tau it will have collision it will scattered ok so so this the so during that time it will move delta k it will move by delta k ok so this delta k from here uh, this velocity velocity from here uh, one can get so this velocity is called this deep velocity that will be that will be h cross m and this k ok so this we can take delta k uh, for this we can take delta k so why you are taking delta k because this is the motion starting from zero up to the time for this duration before getting collision so it was moving this okay so during that time whatever the this velocity develop in the system that is taken as a uh, deep velocity so this we have to put here delta k okay so v is basically uh, then you are getting h cross by m and delta k is minus i will put here uh, e epsilon tau by h cross right so h cross h cross will go and this velocity i will get i will get minus e this electric field tau by m right so that will be the velocity 
that will be the velocity. So, here I can write here I can write that So, this minus minus will be plus minus minus will be plus. So, here n e here e is there. So, n e square tau y m tau y m. So, <coughs> n e square tau by m. So, that will be the conduction uh, current density right. So, I need this. Yes. So, basically current density J equal to equal to n e square n e square tau by m ok and uh, electric field is there, electric field is there. So, I have to write electric field and by definition we know that this J is basically current density is current density is proportional to electric field and this proportionality constant <coughs> equal to it is a sigma and sigma is called conductivity. So, from here comparing these two you can get this you can get this sigma equal to n e square tau by m. So, resistivity rho equal to n 1 by 1 by sigma equal to m n e square tau. Okay. So, here one thing clear that resistivity resistivity depends on m n e square uh, into 1 by tau. So, collision time relaxation time is also very important okay. and uh, of course, n is there this density of states okay. one has to know the density of states. Okay. So, this has all the time it has importance. So, mainly depends on the density of states of the metal or semiconductor this conductivity also depends on this uh, collision uh, time or relaxation time right. So, here what I want to uh, do is that. So, I want to tell you the source of the scattering okay, collision. So, one is impurity in metal or semiconductor or this defect mechanical defect in, in metal because here we have considered the lattice structure sometimes this some some sometimes atoms are missing. So, that is the defect. So, that are the that act as a scattering center and uh, when conduction electrons are moving going they get scattered from this source okay. and another is the lattice vibration lattice vibration okay. so lattice vibration due to lattice vibration this is a quantized term is equivalent to phono photon so here basically we tell this due to lattice vibration it's it's it gives it gives phonon okay we can describe in terms of phonon so that's phonon carrier electron scattering so this is another source for this scattering okay so that's why this tau is basically have uh, two parts one is uh, this 1 by tau one can write 1 by tau i for impurity plus 1 by tau phonon that is vibration. Okay. So, this is the source of these two. So, your resistivity uh, uh, this 1 by tau is here. So, if I multiply with uh, uh, m n square okay, 
with this one also m by n square ok. So, it is give basically rho whatever resistance we get resistivity we get that is have two contribution one is rho i and the other is rho phono ok. So, this resistivity due to the phono and this resistivity due to the electron ok. So, generally this impurity this one is independent of temperature, but this one is is depends on temperature. So, so that is why we write that is this it is a function of temperature ok. So, it is a function of temperature, but that temperature contribution mainly comes from here. So, if we draw this resistivity with temperature with temperature ok resistivity with temperature. So, um, we get this type of curve. So, this is the basically rho i this is the rho i here you will get rho because it is independent of temperature and at t equal to 0 this part goes ok then whatever you get. So, this generally this we tell this part is its relation is, is basically proportional to temperature ok. So, so this impurity resistivity uh, it is called also residual resistivity because it is all the time it is there and depending on that uh, impurity for same metal one can get uh, this two curve. So, this part are just shifting because of this residual resistivity because same metal but impurity are higher. So, scattering is higher resistivity is higher ok. So, this is the uh, conduction of, of electrons in a metal. So, this resistivity or conductivity is expressed this way. Now, in case of semiconductor what will happen? In case of semiconductor In case of semiconductor, we have we have two types of charge carrier, right? So electron and hole, electron and hole, electron and hole, right? Hole. Okay. So we'll get we'll get the conductivity for both. So this sigma for E electron and sigma for hole right. And now, this formula we can use for this also because this electrons this carriers is basically in conduction band they are like free <coughs> this hole in valence band who are participating in conduction they are also like free ok. Only one has to consider the effective mass ok. So, let is so, band from band theory I have seen that this it is uh, uh, one has to take effective uh, wave vector uh, and effective mass ok. So, uh, effective mass ok. So, so that is what one has to do. So, we have to take for this semiconductor we have to take effective mass and same formula can be used ok. And then for both this it will be additive. So, total sigma will be equal to sigma E plus sigma H right. So, uh, so this way one can get the conductivity of the of the metal and semiconductor and the source of resistivity ok that we have discussed how it comes it is because of mainly this collision with lattice collision with the impurities uh, in the system. So, for p type so this for intrinsic case for p type it is the this dominate these are negligible. So, it will be just sigma will be equal to sigma h and vice versa if for n type so sigma will be equal to only only this one can neglect this contribution of this one ok. So, I will stop here then I will discuss about the effect of magnetic field on the 
conduction in next class. Thank you.